that right there can be a pretty big problem. Let's just throw this in there and see if it actually works. Doing my best to not start a fire here. Wow, I honestly think people might not even believe that that's real. So Horn has sent us a bunch of their new boring bars. It's their RS-105 Center Technology, and they are telling me this can break the chip on anything. So Titan told me to grab a camera, come out to the Swiss machine, and do this all live. We have several materials we're gonna throw at it. I personally have no idea how this is gonna go. Okay, so just to give you kind of an idea of what we are doing, we are gonna be taking test cuts on several different materials in today's video. Went to the material rack and I got some 17.4, some 6061 aluminum, and some 303 stainless. Now 303 stainless isn't that hard to cut, but when you're taking a tiny, tiny slow cut, it is pretty easy to get a stringy chip. So I'm kind of curious to see how else this is gonna work because with these materials, chips building up on your boring bars can actually prevent you from running your machine. So if it works, hey, you can run your machine and go do something else. You don't have to sit there all day and pull chips. So without further ado, let's get into it. So if you look right here, this is how Horn's old boring bars used to work. They just had a high rake angle, but Horn's new technology, if you look close, there's a centered chip breaker in the tip of the tool. And from the test results I've seen, this thing apparently can go through anything. So kind of excited to throw it in there and see if it actually works. Because if it does, that's magic, man. All right, so right here, that's the old style of Horn boring bar insert. We have the new style right here that's gonna break the chip pretty much guaranteed, they say. So let's see how the old one performs and then we're gonna throw the new one in there and see how good it really works. So I do wanna say before we get into this that 303 stainless isn't really the worst material to break a chip on, but that's not the point of this. The whole point is to see if just by throwing this tool in there, will it or will it not break the chip? This should generate a little bit of a stringy chip. Oh yeah, yeah. So why is this important? Why should you care? Because stringy chips like that, if you're running production, could easily wrap around tools, break sub collets, break all sorts of stuff. So you do not want stringy chips when you're running your machine. So let's see how it cuts the OD. Yeah, I'd say, yeah. That right there can be a pretty big problem. It might not be the worst thing in the world right now because I'm only running one part, but imagine if I ran this a thousand times and wasn't by the machine. You couldn't, it would be impossible, right? You'd have to constantly stop the machine. You'd have to do something about those chips, either aim a high pressure line at it. Not everyone has all these fancy options to make it so they could break a chip or get the chips off the tool. So let's see, because honestly I haven't tested this yet. Let's see if this tool is actually the solution to this problem. <laughs> yeah. Not, not great. Not great at all. So we're not gonna change any speeds or feeds. We're not gonna do anything. Let's just throw this in there and see if it actually works or if it doesn't and I'll look like a fool because we haven't tested this yet and we're kind of doing it all live for you in front of the camera. So let's see. So we'll just pop this guy out right here. Oh, you camera guys and where you put your GoPros. I think I got it. The old one's this one right here. You can see the, like the oil and chips on it. This is the new one right here. You can see the geometry on the end looks different. You can also see when you look at it this way. They also kind of added some weird geometry to it to make it more strong apparently, like the different features and different like steps and stuff on the boring bar. So yeah, let's see if they're right, man. It will be kind of embarrassing if this doesn't work out. <laughs> Doing my best to not start a fire here because coolant ruins the video. Wow. I honestly think people might not even believe that that's real. That is a night and day difference. That's insane. That's absolutely insane how good that worked. Look at that. Good God, I've never seen anything like that. Like, try to get as best I can. Look at that. Dude, you want to talk about problems getting solved? It is actually a huge deal to go from this to this without changing cutting parameters, just throwing a boring bar in there, Really, that's <laughs> that's about as good as it gets right there, in my opinion. All right, let's see how it does in the OD. Wow, I, honestly, I was not expecting it to work that well. That's awesome. I mean, I knew that would work. Yeah, look at that again, man. Wow, that is insane. I mean, I, I know chip breakers are made for this reason, so it's not like, like, oh, wow, a product's doing what they say it will, but like, in reality, when you look at that, that is... I can think of so many situations that I've been in on these machines where like, if I had this, my life would have been so much easier. All the collets I've had get ruined because chips have gotten in them and it's just mangled stuff up. That's nuts. But I will also say the reality of the situation is this is 303. I wanted to start on a material that was a little bit easier to do, but I didn't think it would be this groundbreakingly different. That's, that's pretty cool. All right, so we're done with the 303 stainless. Now I have 6061 aluminum in there. Let's run the same test with the old insert first and the new insert second. 
see how good it works. And if you needed any evidence that we are doing this live, if you look at the front of the bar, that is raw bar stock right there. So you are going to be watching the very first cut. Genuinely don't know if this is gonna work. Bar feeder's an auto, everything's set. My guy bushing's tight. Tight like a toyga. Close the door, memory. And this will probably sound horrible. All right, so our cutoff's done. Now we are gonna open and rechuck for more stock and run our part. A little bit of a disclaimer here. This tool is not designed for aluminum. It has a coating on it. It's not like a high polish insert or anything. So is this really a valid test? Is it fair? Not really. I think some aluminums are terrible to cut. So we'll see how this works. Really, if it works on this, you gotta give credit to them because 6061 is a pretty difficult material to break the chip on in some applications. So let's see how well this works. Hopefully we get a stringy chip, it doesn't just break it. Horns tools can be very good at breaking chips normally. Oh yeah, look at that. So you might be wondering why not just speed up your feed rate and break your chip with tool pressure. Well, sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes you have to take a slow pass to get a good finish and there's really nothing you could do about it. You can't just go faster because then your surface will be a lot rougher. And yeah, like something like that right there, that's game over. I mean, you, you'd have to get a high pressure coolant line aimed at that thing and hope, absolutely hope that they don't just get tangled up in something in there. All right, so now that I've shown you what not to do, let's see if their new tool works in 6061. So that is obviously unacceptable. That got wrapped around your part and you tried to grab onto it, it's game over. And you'll be over on the other side of the shop doing something else, so it's just not acceptable. Let's try the new tool. Wow, that's insane. That is not even designed to do that. That's it, that is insane. Like that is really <laughs> insane. I gotta give it to him. Oh, a little bit of a stringer. But like, look at the difference, right? Like, that's crazy. That, that was only one little stringy chip and a bunch of flakes. Wow. I mean, at this point, why even use the old boring bar if this thing can just do this? Like, look at that. This is not smoke and mirrors. This is honest to God, same feed rate, same speeds and feeds, everything. And it is just pretty much breaking that thing instantly. That's, that's crazy. I was actually not expecting this to work a little bit kind of make it seem more genuine. That's why I chose 6061, but don't know how to emphasize that. I swear I'm not faking this. <laughs> wow. I can think of so many situations I've been in where that was a problem and I had to stand by a machine with either an air gun or hook up all these high pressure coolant lines. And to think now in 2024, you can just flip your insert and solve the whole problem. That's crazy. So that's it for aluminum. I really am shocked, but now we're gonna go on to 17.4 which is also horrible for breaking chips. And we're gonna see how good it works. So let's do it. Yeah, I mean, and not only is that a problem for breaking stuff, but that's also like a huge fire hazard. That's pretty much like steel wool. I don't know if you've ever seen steel wool light on fire, but that stuff right there running dry like this, which you wouldn't, but we are, is uh, pretty prone to fires. I think at this point, if you watch my videos, you know that I've lit a few machines on fire. All right, so now that we've created an ugly bird's nest, I will retrieve it. Wow, yeah, that right there is Crash City. That is just a bad day right there. If you're doing this in your machine and you can't get it off your tool, that you, you cannot run continuously. This will absolutely make it impossible to run part after part. So, and that's to be expected. I purposely am making these chips stringy. So let's throw the newer tool in there. So you'll see we actually have two sets of the newer tool. We have this one here we haven't talked about yet. That's Horn's new coating. Same tool, same geometry, but two different coatings. And they told me that this coating here, this, I think it's IG35, yeah, IG35, this is actually done in the US. That's kind of cool. So let's, before we try that one though, we're gonna try both on this test because this is more meant for stainless. Let's just see as a control, let's just see how the chip breaker works on stainless before we throw the newer and improved coating in there. Man, that's insane. I, <laughs> I swear this is genuine. I swear this, this entire test is designed to get stringy chips. And I just cannot believe how on such varying different degrees of materials, this is just completely flaking out the chip. And I don't wanna to sound too dorky, but this is genuinely exciting to see. Cause like, man, it, it, that just solves so many problems. If you do any machining, it doesn't have to be Swiss machining. If you're doing any boring or turning like this, you know how crazy this is. We're not having to use a G-code to break our chip or anything like that. We're not pecking. We're just running the same tool path 
and the results are staggering. I really am, I'm really shocked on every material too I've put in there. All right, so let's see if their new coating works as good as their old coating. Honestly, with how this is going, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work flawlessly, but stick around, because you never know. I honestly won't even consider using another small boring bar for the rest of my career, now that this is in existence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why would you even consider using anything else? Really. And I, I don't care if you say that I'm paid to say that, I really don't, because if you're not seeing what the results are just by watching this, then I don't know what to tell you. This coating is more about tool life. It's not just about breaking the chip with the coating. So depending on the material you run, you might use the old, you might use the new, who knows. So got a stringer on the chamfer, but yeah, no, just like the other one. It's almost just not surprising at this point that this tool just works on everything, which you don't get to say that too often in machining. All right, so that's the ID. Let's run the OD, see how that looks. Might get a stringer on the chamfer again. Oh no, look at that, just straight into it. Wow. Oh, there it is. There's, oh. I'm almost hoping for a stringer. I literally programmed this to be a problem. Good grief, look at that. I would actually really love to meet the person who figured this out. This has been such a problem for literally centuries. You can't do anything about the circumstances. If you have to cut slow to get a good finish, that's the situation you're in. And for hundreds of years, we just have had to deal with stringy chips. So the fact that that's over and we don't have to worry about that anymore. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'll sleep better at night. Okay, so that is it for our last test. Now let's lay all this stuff out. I wanna show you actually on paper what this looks like. I think you're gonna be really, really shocked. We started with 303 stainless, which really isn't a hard material to machine. But the fact is, is that I ran this tool and this tool at the exact same speeds and feeds. I just changed tools and this is the results. This is the difference in the chip. That is crazy. And going on to the second material we ran, the aluminum, this honestly surprised me the most because this is a coated tool. It's not really meant for aluminum, but it still worked absolutely perfectly. This material has given me a bunch of trouble. And then on to the third material we ran, another troublemaker, 17.4. Taking small light cuts like this always will lead to this. You always have to work around this. Again, I just changed tools and these are the chips I got. The speeds and feeds we ran in today's video were 200 surface foot, a thousandths and a half per revolution and a thirteen thousandths depth of cut. Very common conditions that you'll see throughout different small boring applications. So I figured that was a pretty good, pretty good test for you to see this work. I uh, really want to give a huge shout out to Horn. Thank you. Your tools worked so well. This made my life so easy in making this video. So thank you. If you do any small boring, I strongly recommend you call your horn rep because this tool is absolutely a game changer. That is it for our video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. It was super easy. If you liked it, make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe and ring that notifications bell because we make videos like this all the time. See ya.